A photo of a man who committed a series of crimes that will give you chills. A photo that shows the damages of fire. And some photos of what appears to be a deranged scientific experiment. We are going to be looking at these and so much more as we cover part 2 of the top 10 darkest photos from history that will shock you. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have the Mad. This is a photo that was taken of someone known as the Mad. His real name was George Metesky, and he was the man who terrorized New York City for 16 years while he planted explosives in public places like an absolute psychopath. I guess he was apparently angry about a workplace injury he had suffered in the years prior to his terrible crimes, so of course the normal reasonable jump to make would be not that. While no one should have ever had to suffer because of these crimes, the good news is that while he planted 33 and set off 22 of them, miraculously only 15 people ended up injured in the end. This photo of him behind bars is extremely eerie thanks to his creepy smile and haunting eyes. I might be the only one who feels it, but it just seems like something's off. You know? In our number 9 spot today we have Ancient Preparations. This is a photo that isn't necessarily very old, but it's of some stuff that has been around for a lot longer than cameras have. These images were taken in the ancient city of Herxheim, which is located in Germany, and dates back to about 7,000 years ago. The photo shows some artifacts which at a first glance don't look too dark or creepy or weird, but just wait. Apparently these artifacts and remains show clear signs of flesh stripping. Yeah, okay, wasn't expected. Expecting that one. Apparently, this was a process that was part of the preparation before consuming human flesh. So, yeah, maybe it is a pretty dark photo after all. I'm not exactly sure how all of these things were used or what exactly the process looks like, but I think that maybe that information might just be better left in the past. In our number eight spot today, we have the lone scientist. This is a photo that comes to us from shortly after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Many of us, of course, already know plenty about it, but if unfamiliar, in April of 1986, there was an explosion and fire from a nuclear reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This explosion happened when there was an issue as they were trying to begin an experiment which was set out to actually make the reactor more safe. Unfortunately, the way this reactor was designed placed too much responsibility in the hands of the operator. One thing led to another and it was a huge disaster and went on to become one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The amount of radiation in the air caused alarms at the Forsmark nuclear power plant in Sweden, which was over a thousand kilometers away, so it certainly wasn't anything to take lightly. That is exactly why this photo of a lone scientist going down into the dark radioactive filled area near the meltdown is so terrifying to look at. It reminds us of the bravery of those who went to help after the disaster and it also reminds us just how scary some of the things we have on this planet really are. In our number 7 spot today we have the figures of the fire. This photo is both extremely unsettling and super captivating as it shows a scene after the great fire at Madame Tussauds in 1925. Of course this wax museum is famous for the extremely lifelike wax figures that are created and find their home there, so you can only imagine the aftermath of a fire. These lifelike figures, but with missing heads and appendages, burnt skin and hair, and just clothing in disarray. Seeing this photo for the first time without knowing the story about it was definitely a bit of a confusing and terrifying experience. The heads on the ground really freaked me out for a full 5 seconds. As scary as it is, I'm just glad to hear that it's not real and just some creative casualties rather than what this photo appears to be at first. In our number 6 spot today we have All Hallows Eve. In this day and age when Halloween time comes around we see all types of costumes. We see a few spooky scary ones, but for the most part we see princesses or fairies or basketball players or some sort of pop culture reference, but back in the day Halloween was a terrifying time. I'm not saying that because people dressed as all these elaborate scary creatures, I just mean that the absolute scraps people would throw together to make a Halloween Halloween mask are truly scarier than any creature I could come up with. This photo just shows a nice little family as they're ready to celebrate the spookiest day of the year, and oh my gosh, it is actually terrifying. Like, I feel like I'm looking at a still from the movie Strangers or something. It looks so terrifying, but it's likely just a completely harmless and innocent celebration. Honestly, while I'm kind of over seeing people show up to Halloween parties as cats, I'll take that over a potato sack any day, apparently. In our number five spot today, we have the experiment. This is a photo that comes from some experiments that were being conducted from the French neurologist Duchenne de Bologna. He was best known for his use of photographs during his experiments, as evidenced by, well, 
this video. He was also known for his research into the use of electrical stimulation of muscles, and of course, these photos really helped to capture exactly that. These photos have gone down in history, not even necessarily for what they show medically, but just because of how startling they are and the often grotesque facial expression seen on the patient. The experiment being conducted in the shot was meant to determine how exactly the muscles in the face produce facial expressions, which he believed at the time were directly linked to the soul of a man. Of course, these strange faces the patient is making are due to the electrical stimulation, but the photos from his experiments truly make it look like the patients are going through some kind of torment or torture. As far as I know, the man in this photo was totally fine both before and after the experiment, despite what it may appear as, which is always what we want to hear. In our number four spot today, we have the Spectre. This is a photo that was taken in England in 1963, and it became known as the Spectre of the Newbie Church. That, of course, is because of the ghostly figure that can be seen in this photo. I'm always a little suspicious of ghost photos. Some are certainly more convincing than others, but Photoshop in 1963 wasn't exactly as accessible and easy as it is now. The photo is said to have been taken by Reverend K.F. Lord inside of the Newbie Church, which is located in North Yorkshire, England. Of course, I mean, like many of us are going to do, people were really skeptical of this apparition and just believed that it was a well done case of double exposure, which, to be fair, is entirely possible. The Reverend continued to swear up and down, however, that the photo was not doctored, so at this point, there's no proof to prove either side, and it's just a game of he said, she said. So, what do you guys think? Apparition caught slipping, or is the Reverend making it up? In our number three spot today, we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18, 1980. This photograph comes from the photographer Robert Landsberg, who of course was in the area at the time of the eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was so close to the explosion, he knew he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but he was also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but he wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number two spot today, we have the Boneyard. This is a photo that comes from what is called a Boneyard. Basically, the photo was taken during a time when it was normal for overcrowded cemeteries to dig up skeletons after five years if the family didn't continue to pay for them to stay buried. Yeah. It's not a great rule, but it happened and it's a part of our weird dark history. This particular photo comes from near the Colon Cemetery in Cuba and it shows what they did with these dug up bones. They put them in this boneyard that eventually grew to be 30 feet deep. That is so creepy. This photo shows how the area became a popular tourist destination and this photo is said to have been taken after the Spanish American War and it shows two American soldiers playing with bones. Maybe not the best idea, I mean a little respect for those who past might be in order. It definitely is an eerie sight to behold. In our number one spot today, we have the crypt. This is a photo that comes to us from the early 1900s, and it shows the area that is beneath the church of Santa Maria della Concezione di Cappuccini, which is located in Rome, Italy. This area is known as the Capuchin Crypt, and it is a little eerie to say the least. That is because the walls are lined with skeletal remains. It is said that on the walls, there are the remains of 3,700 bodies believed to be the Catholic friars who were buried by their order. It is definitely terrifying to look at and it seems a little nightmare inducing, but the Catholic order insists it isn't meant to be so macabre. They explain that it's actually meant to be a silent reminder of the swift passage of life on earth and our own mortality. Well, I can say it definitely does that. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!